Okay, time being 7 o'clock, I'd like to call to order the Summersworth Historic District Commission meeting for Wednesday, July 24th, 2024. And first order of business is approval of the minutes of both the June 26th workshop meeting and the June 26th regular meeting. Do we have any motions or comments on that? I make a motion to approve the historic district commission meetings from that day. I don't think I can motion to approve the plaque workshop because I wasn't there. I'll second the motion. Okay, we have a first and a, uh, a motion and a second on approving the regular meeting minutes. All those in favor, raise your right hand. All Aye. those opposed? Abstain. So, yeah. Five to one, five zero with one abstention. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes from the workshop. All right. Can we have a second? Second. Second. And all those in favor of the approving the workshop meeting minutes, raise your right hand. And opposed? Stay. Another abstention. So again, five zero with one abstention. One zero. Fair enough. Uh, projects of minimal impact. Yep, so there were two projects that were approved as minimal impact um, in July. There was one for 37 Prospect Street for in-kind repairs to eaves, rakes, trim, and gutters, and 16 Grand Street for in-kind fence replacement. All right, thank you. Uh, at this time, we have a opportunity for co public comments by visitors just general comments not pertaining to agenda items. If there's anybody that would like to speak for that, now would be the time. Seeing none, we'll move on to old business. I don't believe we have any old business. Anybody? Okay, seeing no old business, we'll move on to new business. Uh, first order of business is Min Vu is seeking a certificate of appropriateness to install asphalt siding on the facade on a property located at 115 Main Street in the business with historic overlay. Assessor's map 10, lot 184, HDC number 32-2024. And Dana, do you have some background on this? Yeah, so as mentioned, the applicant is proposing to install new asphalt shingles as siding to replace the existing asphalt siding, and this is on the false front um, by the roof of the building. Um, the property has a couple historic applications. Um, they have had approvals for replacing the existing roofing kind um, twice and approval to replace the stairs uh, with a requirement that they be painted by the end of the summer. Um, the applicant is in attendance to give more information regarding the project. <clears throat> With that, uh, do we have the applicant here to speak for this project? Yeah. Yep. Just please make sure the microphone is on and state your name and address for the record. So the check for, is there a green light? Yep. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. We can now. Thank you. Um, so oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, my name is Min. I'd like to, you know, do the project on 115 just uh I like to replace the asphalt with uh, curtain asphalt shingles. Okay. Um, I believe the work's actually been started on that. It appeared when I drove by. Is that correct? Was that? Was that actually st a project that was started too? Um, no. Um, what they the city wanted me to fix the siding there, but like I can't buy the siding that was on the building. Okay. Actually, I'm I'm jumping too far into this. I shouldn't be doing questions yet. Um, is there anything else you want to? Oh, no, no, that's it. Okay. Um, just have to ask if there's anybody that wants to speak for or against this. So I don't believe we have anyone, but is there anyone that would like to speak for or against this project? No? Okay. So I'll stay right there at the podium, and uh, I guess we'll open this to questions from the rest of the board. Mr. Mativia? Yes. Um, their packet does not include any examples of what this asphalt replacement is to be do you have any with you oh uh, I do not but uh, 
it's just regular um gray shingles you know the kind what kind of shingles uh Because you use the term siding in your application, but are you? Did you really mean roofing? Or what, roofing, what? yeah. It's really roofing shingle. So you're gonna use you're gonna install the roofing vert, uh, in a vertical application. What kind yeah, of vertical, shingle yeah. is it? Yeah. What kind is it? It's just regular roofing shingle. Well, there's multiple styles, types, kinds, three tab, uh, architectural. Gray, there's different grades, there's scallop, there's it's gray, there's, gray, uh, gray. Uh, so, you, so you don't really have a sample or an example. I do have a picture on my phone if you want to see it. Uh, uh, sure. So obviously that job has started and those shingles are a gray architectural roof shingle. Yes. Can we, can we, the rest of us see that? Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody likes to see it. So for the viewers at home, he's displaying a standard architectural roofing shingle. Color is gray. Going across in a vertical vertical pattern oh yeah so it looks like it's just going right over top of what's already there that's what it looks like you've already started this was that you've already started the job uh, a little bit yes um Did you explore any other potential siding choices? Or what made you choose that? It seemed like it's color-wise similar to what, what's there. I, I want to be as, you know, color-wise close to what's there. No. Given the current market, what I could buy. No further questions right now. Did you explore? I mean, it looks like you're just going right over top. Did you, did you look at? Did you have any contractors decide whether that was the appropriate choice? How many layers of shingles are already on that building? I have no idea. So, are you doing this yourself, or did you? Ha are you having an actual contractor do this? I, I have someone to do this. How did they decide they were going to just go over top of these, what's there, as opposed to stripping things down or making some different choices? I believe the original plan, uh, the shingle is just to make it waterproof, what they did originally. So, and, and it, the, what's there is deteriorated and there's nothing else I could replace the shingle with. So uh, I, don't see any other options. Paul. Paul. Um, <clears throat> I, uh, I guess I'll just be blunt, and I don't think I'm in favor of approving the proposed uh, roof shingles as siding over the degraded uh, asphalt siding. The asphalt siding that is there is not of the period for the building, does not add to the character of the district. The asphalt shingles being applied in a non-traditional standard as siding, I think, does absolutely nothing for the district. And then, if anything, makes it worse, makes the condition worse from a historical perspective. I understand that you need siding for this, <clears throat> um, uh, for your building. I don't think this is deciding for it. At least I'm not in favor of approving it through this board. I would suggest um, looking at something that replicates clapboards. I believe, and I'm just speaking for myself, that 
uh, this might actually be a decent enough, uh, opportunity to use vinyl uh, siding. I'm mimicking clapboards. It would there's higher quality vinyl siding available now that could be acceptable. There's a number of conditions that this board typically looks for if they are to approve vinyl siding. Um, but I think that for me would be a more appropriate material than to use a roofing material here. Um, but yeah, not in favor of the uh, asphalt roof shingles as siding. I have a couple of questions myself. Um, looking at the rest of the building, it looks like it has clapboards on like the rear and the dormers off the roof, but on the side of the lower floor it has, I believe what's called T111, it's like plywood, but it has grooves that run vertical. Is that an accurate description of what is still on the building otherwise? You mean the blue? Yeah, the blue was. Yeah, yeah it's, always, it's always been like that. Yeah, and then, but uh, on the roof dormer where there's a window on the roof section and on the back side, it looks like clapboards. Is that still correct? I kind of looked at the front. I didn't really look at the back I, when I, I was, drove. I was just, by. I'm not sure what, what you're talking about. I think he might want to describe what the clapboard is. So a clapboard, do they, does this back side still oh, yeah, look like? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that, so it does still have clapboards on the yeah, back, back and yes. on the dormer. Um, I, so I, I guess. I was I just trying to keep the same material being used. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess. I would kind of have to agree with Mr. Goodwin that the, um, you know, there's certainly other options that I, I kind of wonder myself, I'm not a roofer, so I can't answer this myself, but I have to wonder if those shingles should even be put on a wall opposed to a roof. But looking at the rest of the building, having some clapboard still on it, I myself, I just think that would be a better fitting texture to cover this. Do you guys rather have clapboard? I, I wouldn't rule it out. It definitely matches more the building, you know, try to keep it a more uniform thing, which is a lot of what this board looks to do. I'd be okay with clapboard too if you guys let me do that. Um, well, that's certainly up for discussion. So, um, Not only that, if you look in the um, the back page of this one here, is you get a picture of the street and all of them I have clapboard on them, except True. for that one. Yeah. So that would be really uh, more into what's already there, except for that man side one. Down uh, Mr. Mativia and then Goodwin. Uh, um, I tend to agree that I'm really not in favor of having asphalt architectural roofing shingles used in a siding manner. I also agree that it would detract from the neighborhood more than what is already there it would actually make people probably common as what what is all that about but to point out the rear of the building already consists of a wooden clapboard with wooden trim the area that you're talking about residing in front is small in square footage wise i unlike mr goodwin would not be a in favor of a vinyl siding because there's no area for really it to to end on those edges without a more expensive trim j channel couldn't be used uh i would be supportive of a clapboard wooden clapboard okay um and the expense would be somewhat n minimal because the area is very small really it doesn't even look like 100 square feet you know so i am not in favor of supporting this project as as presented yeah just to, to build on that i was curious on what other um board members thought uh in terms of what we would believe is approvable for a a cloud board condition which seems to be the way that we are leaning um just to to poke at um, Mr. McTevier's um, comment on uh, on vinyl, I agree that uh, a vinyl application here, you'd want a rigid backed vinyl uh, product. You would also want, um, we don't allow J-channel, so you would need uh, trim detail around that. Um, 
and you'd also want to make sure that the spacing of the <clears throat> the boards was consistent with the spacing on the rest of the building. Um, I think all of that's achievable. Going to wood, it is a small area. Um, great. Um, I would push you towards, just for your sake, spending a little bit more money and using a cementitious product, a cement-based clapboard product. It's much more durable than wood. Um, but my understanding is that a wood clapboard and or a hardy clapboard, a cementitious clapboard, would also require a trim detail because it's just going to be, you can't just butt join it or leave the raw edge. So I think he's going to be putting in trim regardless. So if that's the case, I personally don't have a super strong opinion, a preference one way or the other, a high quality vinyl product or a individual clapboard um, because I think they're going to look pretty similar based on how we are going to require them to be installed. But that's my understanding. I, I would agree that, you know, if, if siding is put on there, there's going to be some sort of trim covering transition from that. There must be a top plate there that's four or six inches, whatever width that is for that false facade wall that extends beyond the roof. So I would imagine there's going to be something there, whether it's some sort of flashing, a trim detail. I thinking back at seeing other buildings that have this I I don't think it'd be unusual to have some sort of trim that ran along the edge the verticals and the horizontals part of it um, you know I, I guess having some plan of what you might use I I'm kind of open to different products because there are several composite products out there that I would consider you know vinyls really not my first choice because they're typically on the lower end of the quality and we'd rather see something high quality that's gonna last um, wood is another option, but again, I, I'm not stuck on wood with this, but definitely some different options. Um, Tim, did you have? Yeah, to, to just to contribute to the conversation, the reason why I would be not be in favor of the vinyl because the trim, without having J channel, the trim would have to be dadoed or some sort of blind end that you can't butt up to trim with vinyl. It leaves those edges open. You can butt tight to a solid trim and with the sealant with wood clapboard. Um, so that was my really thinking in, of replacing it with wood. And just to read the survey of integrity of this property, it's poor integrity and it's due to the application of the plywood siding, which is currently on the edge of the alley, and the false front losing the trim and also the windows and storefront. If the poor integrity is partially due to that false front, was there a consideration or a potential consideration to just remove it? Remove the old roof? Remove the false gable that's attached to the original building. That flat piece, just take that it off. flat wall that you're trying to put roofing on. Oh, yeah. take it down. What if that was? Have you considered removing that? Behind that is probably the original gable end of the building. Have you looked into that? I'm just. Uh, I mean, I could. I, I. I don't know. I mean, did you? I had no. I have no idea what's behind there. And that's not what's been presented here. If it was with some research, I would be inclined to consider that as well. But currently, I, I'm not in favor of the applicant as presented with asphalt roofing on that gable end. Um, I'd prefer to see another product, and my preference would be a wood clapboard if the project is to move covering this end. So if I would uh, come back next month with a proposed to use wood clapboard, everybody be more in favor? Uh, so I, I think we have, we have a few options. Obviously, if we vote on this right now, it doesn't sound like it would go well for an approval. Um, we could certainly table it if you agree to that. We can table it, and you can provide us, you know, you do a little research, see how you want to tackle it, and come back with hopefully some samples or yeah. some printouts showing us what you might be using just so we yeah. have better info on that. And we can certainly continue this conversation then if you want to go that route. 
Um, I do want to give Mr. Goodwin a moment to speak. I think I saw his hand, but. Appreciate it. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that in your um, uh, speaking to this already. So the, yeah, we, when you come back, we'd want to see the, a detail of what you're proposing. I think specifically there's interest around the trim. So however, yeah. whatever siding, clapboard type siding you're proposing, how it relates, how it's getting finished at the corners with the trim is going to be, I think, important here. And what was mentioned by a number of board members is that the, you know, the false front, none of us are a fan <clears throat> of the of the steps, as it were. And like, I'll just show you diagrammatically here. Originally, this building, this didn't exist. Oh, that never existed. So there's, there's just a, that's what your roof is. Oh. So they're saying, if you want to t t rip these off to just have this be the end with, oh, okay. with trim here, that's like the back side of the building and then clapboards here. Oh, all right. That's what it would have been historically. Oh, I didn't even know that was. You'd, that. You would have to do a little. You have to have a contractor look. You, yeah, you'd have to do a little of a uh, experimental demolition to see behind that. There's possible that that stepped gable is a second structure built in front of the gable it's also possible as mr goodwin described that those steps were added to the existing gable you can't tell so some probing and we need to be done to come to that decision to figure out how that was constructed before you made a decision to move forward one way or the other okay what we're telling you is we're giving you a bunch of different options, but we don't like the option that you've picked. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Spot tonight. on. No. That's fair enough. You Not know, again. I was yeah. I was just oh, uh, minute, trying to keep uh, the material the same, but uh, if uh, you guys want to go with clapboard, I'm okay with that too. Yeah. It's sometimes the existing material isn't really historic and not fitting of the right that's kind of what's happening here and you know it sounds like i figure you guys want to keep the material the same that's why i try to keep it the same would you, know? you be opposed to agreeing to table this and coming back next month yes. with better ideas I'll, I'll 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 come back with the what you suggested <clears throat> bring samples and i'll uh, yes and i'll bring examples More pictures and drawings so yeah. motion to table and do we have a second i'll second all right <laughs> we have a Oh, I'm sorry. Do you have? Oh, yeah. I just had a quick question. Um, as far as the removal of the facade that's there now, is there any sort of architect or um, um, uh, historic uh, photographs or documentation of what the building looked like originally, so we could see what it looked like prior to? Not with the application. Uh, exactly. But I'm saying on file with the city somewhere. I, I doubt the city would have it. Maybe the museum might, but that might be a we shot in the dark. It um, can't be 100%. You know, again, just, just a thought, you know, for, for reference. Yeah. You so know, if you look at the back picture on 3 of 4 of what he submitted, you see on the top of that picture that you can see the false front sticking up over the end gable, hmm. suggesting that the it's just literally tacked on to the end gable. So if you if you look at this picture... This is the back of that false front. Yeah. And you can see that this is your original. So, yeah. So we what we're thinking is that this peak, if you pull this off, is just this peak behind it. And then you have clabberds and you don't have this false front. But it's hard to say how they attached it to that. And I would I would also note that same photo exhibits what I suspect was probably closer to the original detail on the back side of the gable there with the trim and the clapboards on the rear facing gable. Yep. And don't forget to communicate your ideas and plans with Eversource. Oh, yeah, yeah, because the power is there. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. you got power stuck to that. So, yeah, you right. can't. No, no. Yeah. You can't just pull it down. <laughs> there's, no, uh, there's no power uh, to that building at the moment, but, but, uh, but I'll, I'll definitely communicate with them if I were to do anything. All right, so back to the motion. Does the motion still stand to table this? Yes. yes. And the second? Yes. All right. So all those in favor of the motion to table this, please raise your right hand. And so you opposed? don't need to pay a new fee. You just need to come back. All right. Back motion passes. All right. I'll, I'll come back with uh, another proposed plan to, to uh, replace it. I assume that will be placed on the docket as old business if it 
Yeah, we can follow up with you. Um, we'll provide you a notice of decision. Um, and does the board want specific criteria in that motion to continue for him to follow up with, or specific action items, or Intent? just? I would I would think based on what the applicant suggested that he would come back with samples and sketches or drawings and a report of what he plans to do. Yeah, an I'll, alternative I'll options, and then just provide that information to Anna. We'll give you a date that we need the information. All if right. you can provide it to Anna so we can include it in the packets for the board. Sounds good. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, next order of business is Adam Johnson is seeking a certificate of appropriateness to install a window on a property located at 10 Green Street in the business with historic overlay district, assessor's map 10, lot 172, HDC number 33-2024. dash I may, I just, for visual reference, I have a couple of questions. Yeah, that's fair enough. We just need you to announce your Mr. name. Mr. Chair, <coughs> I'd like to, before we can begin, to make a motion to combine case 33 and 34, and we'll hear both these together be great makes i second that makes the most sense they're literally two different applications for the same building yeah um i i don't have a problem with this i just think sometimes we jump around if we can focus on one than the other but i don't have a problem with that otherwise and with that i guess we'll take a vote on that so we eight. need a second i second she seconded it. so all those in favor of the motion Aye. raise your right hand all those opposed six zero so the applicants are understanding that both cases now are, will be heard together as one. Understood. Thank you. And uh, let me just step out of the way here. Sorry. It's all right. This is helpful. Uh, I'm Adam Johnson. I'm here on behalf of the owners of the property at 10 Green Street. Uh, we recently were um, we recently received approval from the planning board to uh, install two or develop two new apartments in unfinished space within the property. Um, we've combined a series of items for property improvements as the same scope of work. I'm here before you to address a, a number of requests. As you've alluded already, uh, there were two separate applications. The initial intention was, which you might notice they were one of them was modified. The initial intention was to categorize them by minor and major. They have, I believe, sort of all been um, entwined into major applications or major um, requests. Forgive the improper term but I think you follow um, so that brings us to where we stand tonight and I think given they are following that category it makes the sense to combine them as you noted so um, the property in question as I noted is 10 Green Street uh, old Greek church as it's been called when the property was purchased uh, there were already a number of standing citations from code enforcement that were issued to the prior owner um, they also happen to be part of our intended scope of work but as you'll note here um, there are a series of, of requests that fall under that category and then separately as part of um, under the necessity to enhance the property in the ways that are requested and I'll get to those individually but in summary um, the first category is repairs of existing exterior building surfaces in kind one replacement of deteriorating exterior trim eaves and facade which I'll show visually repair and replacement of deteriorating window trim and installation of missing trim on an exterior door, which again, I'll showcase in a moment. Separately, rehabilitation of the front porch, which is in kind. Uh, however, given the materials there, might require minor modification. Again, at your discretion, I'll, I'll review that shortly. Um, third, an ins uh, installation of a new basement window to accommodate better egress pathway for the basement space and better accessibility of fresh air and what have you. Uh, which I'll showcase in a moment. And then finally, last but not least, removal of uh, an existing tree in the property greater than 12 inches in diameter that is in poor health. We have a, a quote for that. I'll review that shortly. Any questions before I move forward? Uh, so I got to apologize. I actually skipped over Dana with any summary she may have wanted to give prior to this. Sorry, Dana. I Sorry, I'm just the vice chair, so I don't do this every time. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so as it's kind of been stated, and I'll try to not jump around too much where there's the two different ones. Um, they are looking to install a new two, two new, install two new one over one windows? 
Did I get that right? Or it's one new. Yeah. Okay. Um. Sorry. sorry. I'm confusing myself at the ground level. Is the objective. Okay. A new window is being proposed to be installed. Um, <laughs> so I'm messing that up too. Um, as he's mentioned, the applicants are also requesting to complete a number of various projects, um, an in-kind door, window, roof trim replacement with flat stock boards to match current decor, repairs to the existing front entry railings for safety and accessibility, removal of a tree that was in greater, that is greater than 12 inch in diameter. We had asked for a few additional information, which I think Adam may have made into the um, packets or he will be able to address tonight regarding that um, just the way that the wording was in the application confirming that a door was not being replaced that it was trim around the door and I think he confirmed that um, a bit more information and in detail regarding the re plan for repairs to the entry rails and um, the location of the proposed tree to be removed there is a few um, previous applications that have gone for this property. There was going back to 1988 um, where they got window installation, replacement of a lean-to, rear facade. Um, the historic file goes back and forth. I think it was when it was originally converted to the residential. Um, there's no clear indication of the historic district um, decision in the file. Um, but they did get approval for a wooden stockade fence, renovations to the steeple repair, um, exterior renovations were approved, uh, re-roofing was approved in 2019. And there is one that is regarding right prior to the, their purchase of the property, um, I think, for re-roofing that the application remained um, incomplete. It was re-roofing in kind, though, um, if it had been fully done it would have been minimal impact but it was missing a signature and that Adam has more information for you okay so um, obviously before we get into questions I feel it's just better to have you present everything um, normally we'd ask the public if they have any for or against I don't see anyone else here so I doubt that'll happen but okay. if you want to continue with your presentation then we'll go into questions after that thank you Okay, so as I noted, um, and the reason I bring this up is because some of the code enforcement citations reference replacing materials in kind, um, improving existing materials that are on uh, part of the property as well, and I'll showcase these in a moment. Um, these encompass deteriorating exterior trim, eaves, and other parts of the property, including the steeple. This is really pervasive throughout front facade, um, sides along the building, below the roof. The roof was partially repaired, I believe. However, the, the trim and the eaves were not. So there, are substantial, there is a substantial amount of rot. Um, again, full 360 degrees of the property. Um, separately, the, the trim in the surround of the front porch is of concern. I'm just getting ahead of myself. So the initial objective, just for full transparency, was that we sought um, composite materials to visually replicate what's there in terms of the, the pine boards to prevent further rotting and degradation. Um, it was our understanding, speaking very frankly, that that was frowned upon and perhaps required additional scrutiny. So we're comfortable doing pine boards if that's preferential. Um, we have specifications for AZAC, which is a, a brand that we've used in the past for composite trim. Again, the objective would be to maintain the same aesthetic, however, with uh, more modern material that's more uh, resistant to degradation, as I said. But um, as the application stands and as we move forward, it is the idea would be in kind, using pine boards to replicate the existing visual aesthetic. Um, and again, this should include windows as well as uh, the roof trim and front facade. The second, and should I address all items together and then move on, or do you want to? Uh, whereas we voted to discuss it all at once, I'd say, yeah, run right through your whole proposal, and then we'll sure. tackle them one at a time okay. probably in discussion, I hope. Thank you. So the second, um, in no particular order, I apologize, uh, proposal here is looking at installing a new window in the basement to facilitate accessibility of uh, egress pathway from one of the basement units that is um, proposed for development. Um, 
The objective here, again, would be to mirror the decor and the style of what is there. Um, those windows are already, unlike I believe the other is a vinyl in construction. So the idea would be to replace, and I have specifications, but the idea would be to mirror as closely as possible size, dimensions, and decor of those. Um, it's a little hard to see in this visual, I apologize, but the new window that's proposed would be further west or closest to um, Green Street. These two are existing. Just kind of a summary cursory overview of the proposed um, specifications based on what we're hoping to do. And then last but not least, the um, white eastern pine, I think that's the term, um, tree is that in poor health, we've had a, a tree company propose uh, removal in part because we have parking um, being shifted into that, that direction. We are willing and, and very happy to replace a tree on the property to replicate um, the amount of, of green space. However, it would have to be relocated. Um, this tree is also not in good health, or the picture doesn't quite do it justice, but quite a few branches down. Uh, it is assessed as being in poor health by the, um, the, the tree company. And the idea would be to remove this tree, replace it with a parking space, and then relocate the tree um, and or something alternatively um, mutually acceptable on the, the property elsewhere. And I think the tree location, if you're looking at this from above, uh, it's toward the back of the lot on the eastern side of the property on the far end of Green Street, away from Green Street. This kind of brings me to the end of the cursory overview. If there are any questions, I'd be happy to address them. Does that conclude your presentation yes. then? Yeah. Okay. Uh, will you can will you still need the screen for not necessarily discussion? Like you, okay. I just didn't know if I should stay here or move back there. So. I might stay there because I've got some questions for. I guess okay. I'll start. Can you All right, go well, back to wait me? first? Can you? I got to see if anybody in the oh. public wants to speak. <laughs> just to give that opportunity, and seeing none here, I'm going to assume not. So, um, don't forget your mic. <laughs> Thank you. My mic's off. Yes. For a change. Can you go back to the tree? I'm just trying to look at your tree picture because I'm a tree person. Um, it looks like, is the pine in the middle and you have a maple? Because it's clearly a maple growing around that. Correct. So are you yes. taking all the maples out because they're small and you're going to take that whole batch out? Or are you just... the maple? There are two maples, I believe. One of them is, um, they're both less than 12 inches in diameter. One of them is in good health and is not in the way of the parking area. One of them is in the way of the parking area. That one is part of the scope to remove. Uh, again, we're we're very open to adding more green space on the property. Um, the current location would not be conducive to that, but further down the slope on the other side of the parking lot, closer to the new 85 Elm development, uh, we we do have some landscape proposals there to have more green space added to enhance the, the separation and privacy between the two properties. Okay, so are you proposing deciduous trees or are you proposing um, evergreens? Are you proposing shrubs or and hedges? Or are you proposing deciduous maple? Ash, what are you proposing? So we have not come up with a proposal yet. Um, the idea is really to address the tree that's a, it's problematic at this point. If and we'd like a replacement option. Um, I, I think I would point significant. out that we don't really have purview over the placement of trees and the planting of them. We have more purview over healthy, large trees. So myself, I'm actually kind of surprised that if the tree is in poor shape that we're even discussing this because typically if it is in poor condition, poor health, dead, I don't believe you need an approval from us, to my understanding. I was just looking, it does look like a snag. It looks like a white pine snag in the middle of, I was trying to figure out why there were a lot of maples around it, make sure that it wasn't part of the maple. So I agree. I was trying to get more information, but I would. Enough. I do have some other pictures for reference. I'd have to search for them for, but That's there okay. are quite a few. I just, I, you were saying it was a pine. I'm like, well, there's maple leaves all the way around mm -hmm. that. The maple is smaller. Um, it's also down the slope further. So it's, that was where that's less than 12 inches in diameter. And there's a, a plan for um, kind of replacing it on the property. I did not specify species nor location. Um, we were really addressing the pine with the attention to the 12 inches plus in diameter. But we can, I'm happy to provide more clarity around 
Your proposal talked about doing trim on a door. Do you have a picture of the door that you're doing uh, trim on? I neglected to include that photo. I believe it was in the application. I can bring it up, though, for reference here. If you give me a moment, I apologize. You're not replacing the door. Just You've clarified you're just fixing some trim on a door. That's correct. Microphone momentarily. And then you're also showing a picture. Is the um, handicap ramp already there? I think it is, right? Handicap ramp is already there, correct. And that's not slated to change. It's really repairing um, material. Sorry. Organize this before I think. Sorry, I'm having, having trouble seeing you. It's okay. I was just curious if, if it was something. I mean, Tim is usually our detail door kind of guy, so I know that he's probably going to ask it if I'm not. I just wondered what the specific trim around the door was, and is it going to be completely, you're just going right back to what was there? So like, there was no, a door was replaced. I'll speak in the next one. Sorry, I apologize. It's okay. The door was replaced, the trim around it. So how were you deciding what to add for trim? The objective would be to match the whole of the existing trim on the front entrance. Uh, I know you looked at her photo. Can you adjust the mic so it faces you? Yes, sir. I apologize. The objective would be to match the decor of the trim on the front entry. I apologize. I thought I had a picture in this presentation of that door, um, but it is a masonry surround of the, the door that was replaced. Um, there was no... Is the picture there? In the, application? the rear, isn't it? That you're replacing trim? No. Oh. Nope. Adam, it's in the rear, right? Yes. Is it in the like church court side of the property or the rear rear of the it building? It is on the rear end of the building facing Church Street. There's a little kick out. Oh, it must be this one. I can't see it. I apologize for not having the photo in there. That's why I was asking. On the Church Street elevation, is it the door on the far right that's kind of in the lean to addition on the back? Exactly. That's correct. So we have an elevation drawing of the door, sans trim, no trim on the on the diagrammatic drawing. That's uh, correct. Drawing. The door so was. Seeing it maybe in page five of six, the little T L door. Is it that door? No, look, look at the large set of plans. Adam, you could Second walk day. down Google Earth if you want on your computer and get on Church Street. I believe, members, that it is is on page five or six. It's rather difficult to see. It's in the bottom of those two photos. Oh, yeah. Bottom right of the <clears throat> building, a little lean-to roof with a small door. Just ask that. Okay, so that's what I thought it was. Okay. So that's really. I can add this to a presentation, but if I could also show you my phone, and this is not, I'm not proud of this presentation, but. Come on uh, up. So we, we, as you saw, we just did this last time. Yeah, oh. So this is how the property They spray foamed it and just <laughs> left it. So we're hoping to add trim, but given it falls under. Okay. Thank you. That makes more sense. door was already replaced formerly. Uh, the door is going to remain. The only addition or modification is that we're proposing is adding trim where trim does not currently exist. And it will be in, uh, designed to match the flat stock surrounding the front entrance. I'm good. I think I've, I've asked all my questions. <coughs> Mr. Goodwin. Uh, I uh, agree with Mr. Brooks on the tree. Um, doesn't look in great condition. I don't think it's, even if it were healthy, it's not, to me, it's not a legacy tree that's worth discussing. So bye-bye tree, in my opinion. Um, with regard to <clears throat> replacing trim in kind, as long as it's truly in kind, uh, I have no issue with that. Um, I, pers personal preference, as someone who's in development and construction myself, is uh, to approve a composite, an acceptable composite material because it is more robust and will prevent you from having to come before us again to replace 
it in 10 years when that southern pine probably rots out. Um, so <clears throat> personal preferences for a cementitious material, but there are others that may be acceptable. Uh, so I defer to our other board members to provide their opinion on that. Um, my concern or question really <clears throat> is more on windows, and I have a question for my fellow um, board members um, and also for you. So I think on the elevation, it's a little confusing because in our packet we have a photo of the two existing windows, and you are replacing two window panels. They appear as four windows, right? So it's there's two window bays with the little side windows, right? Yeah, there are four windows. Yeah. Four windows, okay. So there's four existing windows, and you are adding two more. Correct. In a new masonry opening. Correct. So you are cutting into the existing foundation level there to page on our in our packet sheet A4 in the uh, item C5 packet. Uh, there's the elevation on Church Street. So we have <clears throat> the two, the four windows that are on the right side of the page that say, are labeled existing window are existing. Those windows are staying or are those being replaced in kind? They are staying. Okay, those are staying they're, as they're is. And then you're the cutting repair. in a new masonry opening with two new windows to match. That is the proposal, yes. Okay. So my <clears throat> uh, two, several comments. One is I know that grade is a challenge here, but I don't love that those windows are not aligned with the windows above. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it's a deal breaker for me because it's an alley <laughs> and there's very low visibility and I strongly support housing, so I don't think it's a deal killer, but if it was possible to move them to get them aligned, that would be preferred. Um, the other comment I have is, you know, what is the proposed sill or header, I should say, or, or really lintel, thank you. Looking for words, I don't have the right words. Um, but I think the, there are gr granite, the existing windows have granite, and they also have a different brick pattern, or at least one of them has a different brick pattern above the lintel. It looks like they're butt-ended rather than a long course. Um, a header course. A header course. See, I'm learning so many words. A uh, header course. So I'm just curious what, uh, you know, what you're proposing there um, for the header. And then a question for the board. <clears throat> and this sounds ridiculous because this is literally just one small window on a, a otherwise pretty large building. Double one over ones, I strongly suspect, are not the historical window that would have been used in this building. And when we talk about window replacements, are we comfortable of doing in-kind replacements for something that we really don't want to see? Or would we want to see a Munton pattern here that would be closer to historically accurate that will not match any of the other windows with the hope that in 20 years when they go to replace the other vinyl windows that we can then require the correct munchen pattern and then all the builders will match in the future if so you follow that i'd just like to weigh in on that obviously this used to be a church the historic windows went the full length of the two floors that these windows and they you know, were they stained glass in, yeah and i would have assumed stained glass too it's hard right, to see in the picture but if you look at the historical photo there was one window that ran the full length so obviously these are not historic um my my personal opinion is i think it's nice when they all match you know obviously they're not historic we're not going to have you put stained glass windows back in there certainly not full length ones so that's just part of the building being transitioned to housing rather than a church and you know unfortunately i think with all the windows being what they are now i i my personal opinion would be match what's there and keep it consistent but Obviously, I'm just one of many here on the board. So, if I may, just to yep. address, if or you would like to wrap up, go ahead. First. Just um, w with the condition, obviously, that the mason dictates what is most safe. We have some substantial flexibility in the basement where that window goes. So, if there is a preference for height, um, particular location, separation between the others, we're certainly willing to consider all of those. Um, we do. We did get a which I've just learned myself, the, a new term, a lentil, is proposed to be granite to match what's there, partially because of the, the you know, viability of the material, partially because of the decor. Um, 
but location is kind of subject to the Mason dictating safety, but also we don't have that preference, very frankly. Yeah. If I if I may, just for the benefit of the folks at home and for you to see what I'm talking about, I'm gonna step up to the screen here. <clears throat> into this mic. Uh, so I'm thinking the alignment of this window, this center mullion here, should be centered on this center mullion here, right? That would be ideal. Based on, on this elevation, it looks like grade may prevent you from doing that, but I would be curious if you, know, if you could do an assessment to see if that was feasible, personally. So can I respond, because I was looking at the other photos that we have, and on page three of six, I think the reason he can't do that is because there's some sort of granite steps right there. Granite steps. There's some sort of granite. So you can see the two windows. There's a VW bug in them. You can see the two existing windows. And then under the third window. Actually, if, if you look at the next page of our survey, the four of six, the top pictures are very close up of that. Oh, foundation. Yeah, so that's why I don't think oh. he can but. I thought the same thing, and then I looked at the picture and said, "Ah, that's why." I don't know what that granite is. And it I think that's I think that's an interesting point. I'm just trying to reconcile the elevation here to that photo. So, what is not actually this is this is a good coordination catch that we're catching you on right uh, right now. So, if you look at, uh, come over. This will be easier to show you here. Um, so, on the building, you have these inset bays, so your masonry is thicker here than here. Yes. Your window right now is proposed to be s between the two. You're proposing, based on the elevation, to be here. And that's going to be a really funky condition. So probably impossible with the mason, because you've got a jut out right there. It's probably not impossible. It'll just look really ugly. Um, I, but you also have a conflict here we're seeing with this. So I don't know if you're able to sneak in a window in this inset piece, but you're, you're going to have to nudge it one way or the other. So we are able to, just based on the spacing inside the basement, there is uh, availability of space to move it further east, which would be closer to the existing window. Uh, moving it further west, closer to Church Street, excuse me, Green Street, uh, as you described, I think would be problematic because of the, if I believe, if I'm recalling correctly, there are large um, blocks um, I believe they're granite, but large blocks that compose part of the foundation there. So we probably would not be able to move it closer to Church, excuse me, I misspoke again, Green Street, but we could move it further to the right, to closer to the existing window, centered on the, the pillar or jut out that you're describing. Yep. And we have no problem doing I, that I got in one, space. Sorry. Let me jump in one more question. Um, that, gr that granite that you speak of that probably in the way. Is that part of the foundation or does it sit outside of the building as like I a I believe wall? it's part of the foundation. Okay. Um, I guess my next question is would it be possible to just still center it under the bays above but maybe have one window? So it's still in line but instead of the double window just one so you still have the room for the one staying in line so to speak if that makes sense? I, I was also I think that would make sense. Is, are these windows, you said for egress, or are they for natural light in a unit? Uh, they're natural light. We're in an abundance of caution. We're anticipating the fire department may want egress windows as well. Um, but the property is sprinkled, and there is space for secondary egress in the basement. So that would be kind of a life safety decision. <clears throat> but we have, um, it's primarily for natural light. And the question, as far as the design is concerned. One, one more quick question. Would you, would you be removing the grade lower to make room for this window, or would the grade stay as it exists? The window, I don't mean to say whatever you prefer, but the window could be raised slightly or the grade could be lowered. It would not need to be substantial. It's really just the, the top layer of the pavement that would have to come out. Yeah, um, I, the window could also be slightly raised based on the space in the basement. We have kind of an open, a blank canvas to work with. Um, so while we need, would like a window, but we're very happy to design around the window. Yeah, I, I guess my gut feeling was keep it the same level. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, again, the fenestration, yeah, keeping the, the window cost. oriented, yeah. you know, in a pattern like was you know designed, so to speak. Um, I certainly wouldn't have any problem if the grade was lowered to it. But uh, sure. did you have something else, Miss Schoen? So I'm trying to. He talked about moving to the right or to the left, and I just want to clarify. 
There's no suggestion that you're going to put this new window in the middle of that bump out where there now looks to be like a dryer vent, right? It's not going there. So that was not the original proposal, but um, in line with what Mr. Goodman was describing, that presuming we don't shrink the window, we'd be very happy to place it in the middle of that jut out at the discretion of the mason. Um, that dryer vent could easily be relocated. However, so I would really be opposed to that from the look of this. So you, you're. I would prefer that you do one window, or you maybe do something closer to that granite and try and line it up under those big windows, because otherwise, you have two windows lined up under the big windows and a third window that's just kind of naked in the middle of something under the dryer vent, which I think would look really horrific from my perspective. Other people can jump in. Tim's going to jump in. And if you're all set, Ms. Mativia. Yeah, um, looking at page three of six of the packet of, of the um, historical pictures from the, um, you have the side elevation where there is clear indication of how those windows stack. And again, originally, there's a whole floor system that was installed midway between the original floor and the ceiling, giving it a second floor because this was a cathedral church. And that's why those window bays are so tall and long. They were stained glass. They were, the floor system was built dividing those win that glass window, and that's why there are two sets in that one window hole. On the bottom floor where we have the double windows with the granite lentils, inside that inset match perfectly. The description of including with the drawing of uh, sheet A4 of the applicant's uh, architectural elevation shows the two windows with where they're located would actually split the difference between the jot out and the inset, which is impossible. It, it just there'd be the two elevation, you know, one more forward than the other, or, so I think the application showing the two windows in the location it's shown, it just, just can't happen there. Um, the building isn't physically supporting that location. I would be in favor of just a single window, matching the size and dimension of one of the d of double lower ones, installed underneath the right side of that or the more towards the Main Street end of the building, further away from Green Street, and lining up with the right side of that, that row of windows, because I think getting the second window to match is going to disturb the granite um, foundation blocks that are exposed. That's my opinion. I, I'm not sure of how manipulable those granite pieces would be to move to get its double window in there, but I would not be opposed to just one window in that location. It would meet the requirement of um, fenestration for that unit that he's proposing to install there. Uh, and egress in the sprinkled building uh, with multiple ways out is probably not a, a consideration. There's ways and exemptions for that. Um, we have no opposition to um, as described, having a singular window. It would panel. need to be a, a granite, a granite lentil over it, but proportionately lengthed to match the window. If there is a single window, um, that's my take on the windows. I also want to congratulate you for providing a photo of the windows that are already installed, brand new, prior to us hearing the application and obviously installed prior or without a benefit of a permit. The labels of the new windows are still in the window. So they're brand new. Um, I also question on one of the pages that were supplied in, by you for this packet, the double window that's the furthest away from Green Street where it has the two vents that are directly above that window in that wooden stripe that's there uh, are those vents new as well or 
So the, the exterior condition of the property is as it was when it was purchased. The, those stickers are still on the windows as of today, I believe, based on my best recollection. So, so those windows that have the decals still are going to be replaced again? That is not the intention. Okay, I just no. want to make sure. No, yeah. and we did not replace those windows. They were, they were in place. You're just keeping them. We're just keeping them, exactly. All right. And I, I point that out because the, the ventilation that you have above the windows, um, do those, th that exhaust vent serve kitchen exhaust, bathroom exhaust? What, do you know what those two vents f are for? The one between the two existing basement windows, I believe, is part of the laundry room. And the other one that's directly above that window set to the f furthest away from Green Street? I would be speculating if I answered that. I'm not right. quite certain. I can find out, but I'm not certain. It's, I only ask that because I, I doubt permitting was involved for that. Um, it's contrary to code to be installed that close to a window and other reasons. But anyway, um, that said, so that's my opinion on, on the window location. I know I'm going to be a little bit long-winded here. Um, I am in favor of the tree removal. Um, I don't think new trees or tree location is within our ability to decide. And it's landscaping at that point. And we don't, other than retaining walls um, and vegetation that may cover retaining walls, it's it's... A tree planting is irrelevant, in my opinion. As far as the uh, trim goes on the upper elevations around the where it rakes, the eave, the bell tower, all of those areas where you clearly described and shown with the photographs that it is rotting and decaying, I am also in favor of uh, uh, a PVC or AZEC style product. Not necessarily AZAC, that's a brand, but of similar nature. Um, especially, it makes it easier to make that decision. It's not even grade level. Even if it is the, the, the patterns and the appearance, it's almost, as long as you don't use the smooth side and leave a grain side, it, it, you have to almost touch it to understand that it's not wood. Um, so I would be in favor of having that trim replaced as the applicant has described with a wood product or a composite or vinyl product. The door trim <coughs> that he's proposing, I assume that he would match the existing trim. Um, some of the existing trim windows, uh, I'm not sure about the front door. I don't have a very good photo of the front door, but the windows that originally had stained glass and those tall windowed openings are of a molding style that is that your intent to duplicate that trim so mm -hmm. it's a more of a, a step og type of build out the intention and the objective is to match as closely as possible everything that's there as to the should. window trim not necessarily to the flat front door trim i just want clarity i just yeah you know, I stated prior that the we are seeking to match the front door trim. Um, and what is the front door trim? The front door trim is a is a more abbreviated with flat stock. Um, there is, I believe, I couldn't come up with the term for but it. But there's a profile to it. There's a profile to it, yes. So you're planning on matching that profile? That is the intention. If the flat stock that's represented in the exterior windows is preferable, given that they're closer in proximity and more visually you know, kind of the, the grade level windows, the flat stock, um, no. But the other uh, higher window openings that now contain two floors when they used to contain one, mm -hmm. those trim is a built up trim. That's awesome. But if you wanted to choose to match the, the profile of the front door trim, I'd be acceptable to that. And it would match door for door. So that would be either way. But just flat stock, I wouldn't be in favor of just flat stock. Um, and can you talk about, you mentioned in the application, I believe, the front railings and the front railing area with potential modification. Please describe modification. I apologize for lack of clarity. Um, the boards on the front porch that, pe that are the sub, uh, surface for walking. The floor. The floor. Not railing. The railings would be resurfacing, not replacing. And I realize that that 
sort of straddles, as I understand it, the auspices of oversight with regard to painting is acceptable. Um, bees would require some refinishing, given that there's rot in those railings, replacement with polywood or some sort of surface to fix what's existing. The objective is not to replace them, right. to remove them. So keep in mind, if you wanted to repair or replace, making a height of railing that is code compliant now doesn't need to be with this with this building. Okay. Um, there's exceptions to historic structures where although the railings appear quite short, which they are, they can stay short. And they, as long as the style, dimension, and everything is mimicked, but you're not asking for that permission to mimic that, you're just asking to refinish it. Correct. So don't think, when you, when you said modification, I was thinking, oh, you're going to add something to the top of it. No, you don't need to. Okay. So that I appreciate that clarity because I did not comprehend that separately. However, we do want to replace some of the floorboards that are structurally not sound. Um, as and they are made of what now? They are wood currently. And you're replacing them with? They would be wood, match as closely as possible. However, as you are probably aware, we necessarily understood. They might so be I would there. be supportive of replacing the wood decking with wood decking that's almost maintenance and repair uh, if it's matching it's not for us really to decide it's just standard and acceptable maintenance and repair at that point um, and I, I think that's it I apologize to the board for my long windedness but again to reiterate I'd be more supportive of a single window installed in that inset versus trying to cut through halfway from the, from the part that sits proud to the part that sits inset. I think that would look um, unprofessional. So. That's fair enough. Thank you. To be clear, I think from the elevations pers perspective, the, the window is really a conceptual proposal. The location is not particularly a factor for us from, from the owner's perspective, I should say, from the company's perspective, um, given that there's open space downstairs in which we could place the window really wherever it's most advantageous. Um, they were equally spaced, I believe, in the plan. That doesn't necessarily need to be the case. And I, I your point is well taken about the Right, your, your plan so. clearly defines that the pair of windows mm -hmm. not only don't line up with the set above them, mm -hmm. but they're they almost they're splitting that right edge on the on your plan mm -hmm. and i think they should be um probably more accurately represented to if they were just one if you're looking at your sheet a4 of your drawing if that was one window moved slightly to towards green street to align with the column of windows to the right that would be good if you discover that excavation to remove some grade near where those car, those granite blocks are to get the double windows in I'd be in favor of that as well as long as they line up with those two above so I think again just looking at the picture of the granite and I'm I'm seeing this in the picture more than I'm recalling it specifically um, it may be impossible to match two windows to the above but one window I believe is is feasible and we'd have no problem with that Mr. Goodwin? <clears throat> uh, I'm going to craft a motion here in a minute, but before I do, I just wanted to ask my fellow board members um, on trim, I believe they presented replacing in kind with wood. Do we, in the approval, need to be specific around the material if they preferred to use a composite? I think there are some places that we wanted wood, like the floor, but I think that Tim pointed out and you were okay with. Azor or Azac or whatever it's called, composites for some of the trim pieces. And as an owner of one of these houses, composites are wonderful if you can find them that are in kind. I think the issue is it needs to look like that. So maybe we say floor to be replaced with, like we don't want Did mixed. I, I missed the floor. Is there floor replacement the here? The planks on the front. Oh, okay. So maybe what we say is in, in kind materials rather than mixed. So we don't want like, a composite floorboard mixed with a non-composite floorboard, but I think if he's replacing all the sets of rotted trim, that we might as well let him use composite. Okay, got it. Yeah. And uh, I would agree. I, 
I think as long as we just say that composite material of similar dimension for trim for, trim. for the trim, trim and would okay um, kill the tree kill the tree uh, I'm <laughs> I'm ready to try and craft a motion unless folks want to continue discussing. I just want to say one thing that uh, that we've been looking at these pitches from the, with all the windows. These were taken in 2013, so ah, it's been a yeah, while. Yeah, long long after the stained glass was removed and a floor system installed. Yeah, but this is from Rich Casella's 2013. Correct. Oh, you think the stickers on the windows are. And if you turn that same packet to the very last page, page six of six, there is, um, it does identify the May 2013 survey, but no, it can't be. It's a black and white photo. Um, they always include, well, they always tried to include yeah, a historical photo. I think this was part the of the survey input, but not the photo taken in 2013. No, no, the photos. From photos probably in the 40s. That's the 2013 report, yeah. It yeah. included the, all of the reports include the pictures that were right. part of the 80s report. So, so I'm, I'm guessing that this photo is really a file photo somewhere in the 40s or 50s. The stickers may not even be there. It's been 11 years. You can so. see the full windows in the old. And place. you can see the full length windows. Yeah. Beautiful. And later uh, the, when the church was purchased, there was a floor system installed halfway in that cathedral and pretty tough to have windows mid-floor so that's how that went down there's some really great adaptive reuse church projects now that keep the stained windows but that's another story um one one other comment just before i craft this motion uh, i'm planning to to craft it to include the one window as we've discussed i would say to you know to you and this is your prerogative if you go back to your mason and say, you know, hey, can I? Uh, how how movable are these granite pieces? We've and that second window is valuable to you, because um, it's really hard to tell from the photo. They might not be as structural as we think they are. Like a mason might be able to just pop them out and essentially tooth in some new brick, which might not be that big of a deal. I don't know. I'm not a mason, um, but if that's true and you want a second window, I would be. I think I think the board would be as long as it aligns yeah. up with the above. Okay with the second window. We, just based on the information we have tonight, we just don't think it's possible. So I'm going with the one window approval. And so, something I just noticed in the picture on this, that the close-up of that area in our survey, it looks like there's a vent just to the left of where those windows are. Yeah, that's why I think it's not particularly structural, because there's a big-ass vent going through it yeah. right next to it. So I it, don't have a button here. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, no one's listening. Um, I hope you're wrong. Uh, <laughs> uh, so the, I, I guess a, a thought on that window is, would would the applicant be comfortable with us crafting it with a little bit of openness, or would you rather re do a little research and come back to discuss exactly your plan with that? We are comfortable with openness. We, as I noted, that's really a, a vacant, unfinished, un, excuse me, unfinished open space. Uh, we have flexibility to relocate that window as dictated. Frankly, we could do without the window. We really, it would be advantageous for the layout of the, those new units to have an additional window. So we're not stuck with what those two windows provide for, for locale to make sure both, both units do have individual windows. Um, that being said, if we have to move it a couple of feet in either direction, we really have no strong feelings on that. Yeah, if, uh, if you got to move it a couple of feet, you'll have to come back and see us. But okay. if I had to guess yeah. that in page four or six kind of indicates it might be foundation i don't believe it is yeah i think it stacked blocks and pretty tough to put that size vent through a granite block but i'm not at that job site i'm not looking at it so i'm guessing fair enough yeah um, i, th I you... agree with that just looking at it it looks like it's granite that's essentially probably to some exist structure that doesn't exist anymore uh the that staff. was them that was then just attached like the brick it's just part of the masonry wall now so it, it could just be essentially a granite veneer at this point your mason will know i we do not anyways okay using for masonry is it somebody we don't have a mason secure we do have a contractor that has a mason on retainer that we're working with he helped conceptualize where this was going to go but he has not evaluated the foundation or any of that yet all right and 
If there's no other discussion, we'll let Mr. Goodwin make a motion. All right, bear with me. Uh, I, I move to, where's the applicant? I, sorry, too many packets. I'd like to make a motion to approve the, uh, where's the address here? Subject, the application HDC number 34, dash 24 and 33 dash 24 um, as approved with the following conditions that the trim is replaced in kind using a comp an acceptable composite material emulating the historic wood that the window addition be a single window aligned under the existing window above with a granite sill with the mimicking the same uh, reveal as, uh, as the existing granite sills, meaning the space between the end of the sill and the window. Um, any other conditions? <laughs> is that does that? We approve the tree. Do we need to say that separately? It's well, it's not a condition because it's just approved. We're accepting it as we're accepting both as a proposed, and the conditions are only how we're modifying what's been discussed. I would say that I would want a condition that the window as proposed shall not be in the middle. Whatever that middle thing is. Yeah. Well, we're we're saying it has to be aligned with the window above. That's fine. Friendly amendment? Please. That the deck boards that are proposed to be replaced, wood for wood, wood. that any railings to be removed, to be treated or sanded or whatever process the applicant chooses, they shall be replaced exactly with the same material or replaced with what was removed. And if it is discovered that the second window is an option, that it too shall line up with the exact window line up that is directly above it with the granite lintel then extending over both windows as the other ones do. I like that amendment. I would second that amendment. Okay, so bear with me. Let me read this back and make sure I have this worded right for the amendments so I'm going to take the window one first just because it's technically two different ones so that one the windows would be located in line with the existing windows above with the possibility of there only being one window in line with one of the paired windows does that make sense and clear enough for Mind. I'm going to look for a representative basement photo while you review that just to double check my understanding of that space. Okay. And then for the other application, because it's two separate ones technically. Do you want um, to cover the second window if, if chosen? So I said, the, so. Just to repeat this, uh, approved with the condition the windows would be located in line with the existing windows above. If only one window is installed, it'll be in line with the right window of the pair above. A lentil? Granite lentil shelf. Which, didn't, was that already in your application, granite lentils? No. We didn't note that in the application, okay. no. I'll, then, yes, I'll add the granite lentils. Granite uh, lentil, and I think the... Um, to have a reveal consistent with historic existing granite lentils. With granite lentil to match the existing lentils. Yeah. If it's one window, 
it spans one window. If it's both windows, that lentil will span both windows, mimicking the reveal of the other windows. One notation that vent is now plywood, white plywood. Beautiful. Just for, I'm looking at a, a recent uh -huh. photo. So I, I said the, it would be, yeah, if, if only one window is installed, it'll be in line with the right window of the pair above with granite lentils as matching as they exist elsewhere on the building. Is that good enough? I believe that vent used to exhaust the boiler room, but those boilers have been modified and is no longer in that location. Okay, so so if we're continuing this motion with the other application, which covers the railing, eaves, trim, door repair, tree removal, um, so this would be approved with the condition that trim is replaced with composite materials matching existing trim dimensions profile. and profile, dimensions and profile. And deck surface boards are to be replaced with wood. Was that? Yes. And am I missing anything, or is that a complete? Railings removed Railings. to be repaired shall be replaced in kind or what was removed. If the, if the railings are required to be removed for servicing, they shall either be replaced um, where they were with the original, and if repair to those need to be mimicked exactly to what is existing. Can I ask for a clarification on the trim? Just based on your discussion at the board, there was conversation that the upper trim was allowable to be composite. You are, the way it's written right now, it would allow the door trim to be composite. Yeah. Just clarifying. I would be fine as long as the profile matches. Yep. Okay. Comfortable with all trim being composite. Yeah, I'm comfortable with it all being yeah. as long as those profiles yeah, I, mimic the pre existing profile. So if the railings are removed in whole or in part, they would be replaced with existing dimension material. Is that there's a potential that treating them, sanding them, whatever the process is, that would be difficult to do in place. It may be simpler to remove them, do it somewhere else, bring them back. If some of those parts are damaged and need replacement. They need to be mimicked. Of note, I don't have a great photo, but in the photo I do have it, it does appear that that space is viable for the window, the singular, singular window at least. So we'll have the mason evaluate the viability of two, and we'll see what Mason says. Sorry, bear with me on this. Sure. Are you going to attempt to repeat the motion? Yes. <laughs> Just trying to get it all ready to go. I know that you say it's Because it's easier to write it than no read it than it is to. Repeat the motion. I'm so glad I seated the presidency tonight. <laughs> <laughs> no regrets. Okay, so for this motion, approved with the condition that trim is replaced with composite materials matching existing trim, dimensions, and profile. Deck surface boards be replaced with wood. If railings are removed in whole or part for refinishing, any replacement, any replaced material will match the existing dimensions and profiles. Of note, so it's on record, there was a section of railing cut away to accommodate uh, a wheelchair ramp. That railing is still sitting on site of, at the property um, for future perhaps use, but 
um, there was a section cut away prior to the building's purchase for accessibility by the ramp. So, so is is the ramp actually installed, or is it like there's an existing? Um, so it's still usable in metal. place. You still have that component. Yes. The missing piece Failing component. Yes. And the intent is to keep that for perhaps wheelchair. I believe ramp. there's a resident that uses the wheelchair ramp. I think an objective down the line, if it's not in use, given the the nature of it um, on the property, I, I imagine this board would feel similarly that it's not perhaps given that it's not actually needed for use and accessibility um, could be a future perhaps removal. But yeah, and uh, and just just for clarification on that, I believe the wheelchair ramps are not required, but if they're installed, they're supposed to be removed once the resident that needs it is no longer using it they're supposed to be removed if i'm not mistaken so it's how zoning reads or similar to that word yeah. so just for your info on that okay. um so i believe we're all clear on the motion and i've read it enough times that no it read it again <laughs> really one more time <laughs> so did we have a second on that i'll second it all right any discussion on this motion with that being said, everybody, please raise your right hand in favor of the motion. And opposed? Passes 6-0. Okay. Congratulations. You're Thank approved. you for working with us. Thank you for working with us. We're looking forward to it. Thanks for buying a building that needs some work. <laughs> and not coming for us and asking to tear it down. We're appreciative. All right. Thank you very much. my agenda so I don't think there's anything else anyway no nope, workshop business yes so uh, with that we'll move on to workshop business do we have any workshop business tonight uh, mr. chair I was not attended I was absent for that last workshop so I'll defer to attend an attendee do we have an attendee who was there Richard were you there I was there for part of it Last this, month? This month here right now. I, I, I took ill when I wasn't at that meeting or this one last month. So there is no no, no, uh, no workshop business to report. Well, they're in the, it would be in the minutes. Right, and there's no workshop, there was no workshop prior to this meeting, so I have nothing to report. No, that, yeah, there was nothing prior to this meeting, just the previous meeting we had a workshop prior to it. So nothing to report. Anybody else? Any communications or miscellaneous? Anybody know when Vita is going to actually open? We need to talk about. Uh, in the next couple weeks, it's anticipated. I think um, in August, at some point, they're hoping. All right, Mr. Goodwin. <clears throat> uh, thought for you know getting the board's interest on this it's a kind of a tangent but I um, am part of the mayor's task force on housing um, also in my role on council and uh, very uh, interested in how we can uh, quickly implement a lot of the recommendations made from the recently adopted housing chapter um, and just in general supporting um, housing development in the city which has many uh, multifaceted sort of pieces to addressing that. Um, as part of that conversation, uh, I have asked the mayor to put a present, uh, presentation together for the housing task force, which I'm in the process of doing, um, and I'm also planning to present it to council. It is a deeply nerdy, uh, pretty technical, but I think important review of sort of where where I believe, based on my expertise of uh, how you know where we're at in the housing crisis and how we got here I would be happy to share uh, said presentation with the this board if there's any interest because I think there is uh, eventually will be implications um, that come from some of the work that uh, is being done in the housing task force for the historic district uh, primarily discussions around simplifying zoning uh, uh, possibly consolidating uh, residential zones increasing um, density is, I think, on the table, getting rid of form-based zones on the table. And uh, my presentation won't necessarily get into the specifics of 
those things, but will rather sort of set the table as to sort of the urgency of the problem and some of the things that we as a city at a very high level can do to address the problem. So I, all I would say is I think it could be useful if there's interest, but it could also be something you guys have no interest in. So I'm just flagging, flagging that as uh, something for you to consider. So would that be like a presentation at the next meeting if we were to do that? Or Probably not the next meeting, but maybe, yeah, it'd be a presentation at this board's discretion. It could be workshop, it could be whatever. Um, with, with that being said, of course, I sit on that board with you as well, so I'm you can pretty, just skip it. Yeah. I'm pretty familiar with it, but another topic is ADUs and some changes to that. And I know we discussed this at that meeting, the fact that we have so many outbuildings like barns and so on in the historic district that sometime, you know, I, I think there's some feeling that some of those could be repurposed into housing. Um, my concern with that is maybe keeping the front looking like a barn still and adding the windows to the side of the back to alleviate, you know, changing the appearance of it. Mm -hmm. But just another thought, you know, it's amazing how one thing affects something else and it yeah, I, a chain reaction with some of these. So I think the presentation could very much be like I get up there, do my horse and pony show, and then we have a discussion around what uh, what is happening perhaps in the task force more generally or what... <coughs> the HDC's interests or concerns are. Um, really, I'm just trying to bro broaden the conversation as much as possible, underline the crisis as much as possible, and in a, in a, uh, in, I guess, in my, from my perspective, specific terms that sort of outline the urgency, um, because I don't want to be in a position where council's trying to do one thing, the ZBA is trying to do another thing, the housing task force is trying to do another thing, the HDC is trying to do another thing. So I have the... <coughs> Uh, luxury of being able to cross, cross pollinate <laughs> across these um, these bodies, um, so uh, I'm hoping to do that. I I agree that it's good that we should be in on the conversation because you know so much of this does affect other boards and relevant to so many different boards. Um, I don't know would that would it work better as a workshop? Would it work better just as a discussion item maybe during the meeting? I, I guess what's I suspect a work. thought on I that. Suspect I would a suspect a workshop. I think a workshop. Okay. Do we open it to the public and say, workshop on how proposed changes may impact historic districts so people Any can meeting come would be open to the public? Yeah, I think it's it's fine. I'm, I'm, <coughs> I have, I'm planning to do this for two other times already. I'm, gonna, I'm hoping to do it for both the housing task force and council. As long as it doesn't start at five. <laughs> yeah, well... Uh, if, if we schedule this for like six o'clock before maybe our next meeting or the meeting at, I don't know what your time frame looks like for that. But I haven't, I haven't done. I've built out the presentation. I haven't done a dry run for timing, but I can definitely f I think we can fit it in an hour. So both the presentation and discussion. Okay. Should we schedule that for before the next meeting then? Sure, Would that as long be... as you don't have to have a plaque workshop. Um, oh, good uh, point. Why don't we do September? Okay. I think that would be better. Well, let's revisit it at the next meeting then. Okay. And I was invited to and was anticipating sitting on that housing board. And when the meeting was, I, I mentioned at five and just, but it was originally scheduled for six and bumped to five. And five was, six was hard. Five was more difficult. And then work gets in the way sometimes. So I was not able to attend that work, so that task force meeting. And I'm curious, has there been more task force meetings since that? six to five debacle there's been three i thought i was on it too because i came Four. to the first meeting with the two of you and then i've never seen another invite so and i've not no. seen another invite I, as well i think you're discussing the uh oh the joint task force on historic oh. advisory committee yeah yet a different committee yet a different that, committee <laughs> Well, they were yeah, pretty we close. So one meeting. Remember the meeting with the woman yes. from the Stratford County Regional Planning? We all went to that, yep. and then I've never seen another invite. Huh. So, see, so yeah, I think we're mixing two up here, but... Well, I, I think uh, Kimberly's okay. mentioning the, the correct meeting. I think 
Tim might be thinking about the special t joint task force between. I, I, I think it was one with the, the mayor had asked me if I could attend, and I yeah. said yes. So and, I, I believe. And then that. it was going to be at six, but then it turned out it was really at five, and. That one, I believe, is officially the Historic District Advisory Committee. Uh, if, if I'm getting the name, I might have a word yes. wrong. Right. Is but that committee met since that? No, we've only had the one meeting. Yeah. Um, in fact, I think partly because of the scheduling, it was very low attendance. I think there was three of us that showed up, and yeah. we didn't even elect the chair because so few showed up. So yeah. I, I think we should revisit that meeting and scheduling another one in the near future. And I think, you know, I don't know, again, we're kind of having the discussion now, but I suspect that that committee, that joint task force to on the advisory of the HDC is probably not going to have a lot to talk about until the housing task force has some, I think there's a lot of moving pieces, and my guess is they are going to be at the table for some of them, but there needs there's nothing for them to respond to right now. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they're the first mover. Yeah. That's kind of my guess. Well, I I think that whole committee came out of well, a lot of the eighty seven Elm. Right. Good or bad, however you want to look at that. Oh, it came directly from that. Uh, absolutely. Okay. So, so perhaps so, we want to yeah. Do we need you know, a meeting? Do we not need a meeting? What are we doing? That's so that opinion. committee, so let let's separate these for a minute. We've got the mayor's housing task force. That's what you started discussing. Correct. With involving us, having a presentation, blah, blah, blah. The Historic District Commission advise, Historic District Advisory Committee was supposed to be between the, a few members of council and a few members of this Historic District Commission to discuss how we can make improvements in us. So. I think there is still some things there worth talking about that's not necessarily related to housing task force topics, but yes, they might overlap as well. They might have some. Yeah. So, I, if I remember correctly, it's Laura, me, and Tim that are from the HDC on that, and I believe it's Gibson, Misho, and Goodwin that are from the council on that. I yeah, that sounds vaguely familiar. I, I, well, this is neither here nor there, but I guess a thought that occurs to me is maybe when I get around to scheduling my presentation with the housing task force, I can simply, we can make it a joint HDC housing task force workshop. Because it's essentially just gonna be me doing my horse and pony show and then discussion, uh, which, and I think having yeah, all the folks in one room, is actually gonna make it easier. Thank you, so anyways, okay, I just wanted to plant that seed. I will um, schedule when so, appropriate. So tentatively we'll do that before the September meeting. That is, I think that's more, because what, what day is the, uh, uh, the August meeting? It's the t 21st? No, it's the 28th. 20, oh, the 28th? 21st will be planning board. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm, not in, I'm not in town for the next month's meeting so we'll definitely have to do it in September that'd be a challenge for you to do your pony show when you're not here I know I'll be in Texas with actual ponies <laughs> <laughs> so so with that being said let's moving on from the mayor's task force the historic district advisory committee do we feel that we should have a meeting with that or try to I'd like to think that we need to first feel out the input of the housing task force that may influence any decisions and topics that we may have discussed. Um, so I'd like to suspend that committee until more dialogue happens between the housing task force um, because that that's going to feed probably our discussion. I, I agree. I, I think it will have some impact on it. I, I think it's worth maybe reaching out to the mayor about that and saying, hey, should we have another meeting of this? and Ask him to... Kind of coordinate. kind of coordinate with the members that are on that, and because obviously we're not all here either, so we can't really mm. get a good consensus on that topic even at this moment. So I guess we'll try good. to reach out to the mayor and yeah, follow follow up on that committee, and then wait for Mr. Goodwin's presentation on the 
housing task force. Does that make sense? It does. All right. Anything else? Yeah, nothing else? Do we have a motion, motion to adjourn? Second. Motion to adjourn. All in favor of motion Aye. to adjourn, raise your right hand. Opposed? Passes 6 0. I raise my left hand. Doesn't count. I can't tell the difference. <laughs> <laughs> Judges in court will say raise your right hand. and might have clients going like this because they can't figure out which hand is the right. <laughs> kind of sad. For real? For real? And then the judge are like, you understand what's going on? And I'm thinking, they can't.